how we will be develop the project here that's we are going to discuss is it fine everyone because part project we will not be covered still so we just plan and we'll do the development with query mode and it's completely hands so we can see that today okay guys Uh, Shankar, okay then? Eh? Uh, okay, yeah. Okay, up the roof, okay. Two minutes, two minutes. நீங்க <laughs> ஒரு <laughs> <laughs> இது எடுத்தீங்க ஒரு இது ஸ்கூப் ஜாப்ஸ் பத்தி ஒரு தடவை எடுத்தீங்க சோ இம்போர்ட் எக்ஸ்போர்ட் பத்தி பே பண்ணீங்க ஓகே ஓகே அப்புறம் ஸ்பார்க் பத்தி அந்த ஆர்டிடி பத்தி ஒரு தடவை ஒரு செஷன் நடந்துது ஓகே அது நீங்க எடுத்தது தான் எக்ஸ்ட்ரா கிளாஸ் ஓகே சரி மூணு அப்புறம் அந்த புரோகிராமிங் அதெல்லாம் எதுமே நம்ம இன்னும் போகவே இல்ல எங்களுக்கு சரி ஓகே அதஸ் எல்லாக் மே அதே தானா அதுக்கப்புறம் Okay, let's say you know about that uh, Hadoop architecture basis, how it will be okay. So we have cluster. So let's say for example, I have final cluster, one should be a master, rest of that as a data nodes. Okay, so all the data node metadata information will be stored in name node itself, right? Mm, okay, whatever. So it will be referred to the metadata and will be produced. Okay, now if I am the client, I am going to request okay so i am the client i just request i want to handle 10 gp of data uh okay let's say for example i want to handle 200 gp of data okay this data i am going to handle via the name node and do some analysis and produce the output to that this is my plan so all the information will be available right 
the name would only have the all the information so what it will be do is just going to be identified where the actual data is available, where the replication factor, the same data is available. All the information is just gathered and will inform you based on that mappers and reducer concept. Okay, till now any doubts in this? Hope no. Or any questions? Okay, so in this name node, we'll get all the information, then it's going to be planned. Okay, so my cluster size is only for um, okay, 16 GB RAM and 8 cores is available, each node. Okay, the same, I have every, I have every node. So total cluster size is how much it will come? Name node also will be the same, we can consider. So total. Will be 80 GB of RAM and core will be 40 cores, okay? So total here, but actual my data I will be in 200 GB of data. I'm going to process it. Will it be suited to this 80 GB of RAM? No, right? So what will be happen? It's going to be identified and convert in this as a job. This job will be balanced with your yarn architecture. Yet. Another resource negotiator. Okay, so this is the only one is going to be control your entire process. So if name not going to collect all the information about the data now, then this all the information will be informed to yeah. Okay, this is the data. I'm going to process it. This kind of this many data I'm going to process it. And this data will be available from this data node. All the information will be yarn gathered. Once yarn get all the information, it just planned. How we can handle the data with this replication factor. And this is a client one. Same like client two also will be producing another one request. So that is only for 20 GB of data they are going to handle it. Because multiple job we can submit it to the name node, right? So all the information will be gathered. Then it just consider, okay, we have 80, a 60 GB of RAM and eight core in for each data node is available. Total 80 GB of RAM total we can. So it's just planned and creating the algorithm based on your client expectation because we will be doing a lot of the query commands right everything it will be identified and it will be split the data into the partitions so 80 gp divided by number of partition how much what is the block size anyone what is the default block size 126 mb it's 128, 128 mb of data MB, yes. So one GP of data will be okay. Two hundred GP of data will be how much will come? Two hundred and so eight uh, blocks will be in one GP, right? So this many block will be created. Partition data. So sixteen. 1600 blocks will be partition data will be available. Let's say for example, I'm saying. So this much data, this size of data I'm going to handle with your notes. Then what will be happen? It's just going to be locate. Okay, first, uh, I just split the record into 
40 GB of data will be available here. Mm, 20 GB of data available here. 200, right? Total four only. 60. 60 GB of data will be in data node 3. And 80 GB of data will be in data node 4. Okay, it just identify. Okay, total it will come to 200, I guess. So it just identify and then divide by the number of partition I just mentioned, right? So each will be divided by this value. You can mention it 40 into 8. So for the 320 partition data will be available here. So this information, everything will be gathered from the yard and continuously accessing the data and process. It's based on the partition based. So first it will be capable only for 16 GB of data. So 40 GB will be 320 blocks will be available. So in this 320 of GB of data, sorry, blocks of data, 40 GB will not be acquired with only 16 GB of RAM. So what will be happened? I'm just slicing the record with 16 GB of RAM sizes. So 16 into 8, 128, 128 block for each time it can be processed. Am I right? So first 128 MB of sorry, partitions data will be moved to data node 1. Once it is done, rest of that again 120 will go. Okay, both will be complete. 256 is complete. Out of 256, 320. Okay, better we can go with small calculator. So 320, 40 GB of data in data node 1. So it will be divided into multiple box. So 40, 40 into okay, 320 is available. So first process will be start with stage one. It's not a stage, okay. So first process will be take it out 128 blocks. 128 of 16 GB of RAM. Once it is done, again 128 of 16 GB RAM because the data is capable only for 16 GB. Okay, total 256, 56. So rest, only 64 MB of data is available. Third time is going to be handled with 64 GB of data. So 64 blocks of data with 64 block is enough 8 GB of RAM, right? Am I right? It will not be considered to take entire 16 GB of RAM from the data node. So, 8 GB is only is enough at the time. So, 8 GB will not be allocated at the third time. So, this is one data node is working. Likewise, data node 2, data node 3, data node 4, all the places will be performing. Are you clear? Any question, guys? So, entirely it will be followed like this. And final output you will be getting. This is one block will be 320. So 20 GB of data, then it will be 160 of 160 GB of data only here. So blocks will be available. So 160 blocks will be divided by 128. 
sorry, based on that 120 MB, then it will come with 128 for entire 16 GB. Okay, I will do one thing. The data node one is going to be handle it. Okay, likewise, 28 GB of data will be performed here. Like plus 60 GB of data will be filtered based on the partition and will be performed with your data node 3. Likewise, data node 4. Once it is everything will be covered with 200 GB of data, the final output will be resent to your yarn and yarn will be resent to you. In this between, the yarn will be controlling with your resource manager and node manager. Right, resource manager inside each data node have their own node manager. Okay, so yarn will be interact with your resource manager. Resource manager is going to interact with your node manager. It's going to be identified with your node manager in each. Okay, all the process is completed. Resource manager can confirm. Okay, we have completed 200 GP of data entirely with efficient manner. The final output is this one. Like that, it will be resend that output to Yarn. Yarn will be confirmed with your name node. Yeah, we will be getting the output and that output will be sent back to client via name node. Okay, so this is the way it will be happening that uh, operation the backend. Any questions on this? Yes, do you have any question? Are you clear then? I think no question. So this is a yarn work. In Hadoop 1, we will not be used to yarn separately. In name node only, it will be controlled that resource manager task and a node manager task, which is named as task tracker and job tracker. Okay. So the problem is name node will get burden more. It will not be continued with all the process properly. That's what yarn come to this picture. And Hadoop 2, as a map produce introduced, then only yarn will be functioning all of this operation. Till now in Hadoop, we will be using yarn only. So that will be controlled and identifying your operation, how efficiently we can complete it. And Hadoop 3x version, they'll be increased to yarn performance very uh, efficiently with that proper timeline. Before in Hadoop 2, we will not show how long the time will be take it out for to complete this operation. But in Hadoop 3 expression, we can identify how long the time process will take time. That is, we can identify. Okay.
Any question, guys, on this point? Okay, hope everyone will be clear on this point. If no question, then tell me what this is not covered more than this. That also we can cover today. Uh, Shankar, is anything uh, yet to be covered in yarn or? Yeah, that 40 GB you mentioned, right? That that it 320 blocks. Yeah, 320 blocks. Okay. How it will so that is a eight core. So no, it's GB a RAM block. Also. Block. I am saying. Okay. So 320 GB of data I have in data node one. I say it is 40 GB data is available that I am measured randomly and will inform you. It may be in shuffled. Okay, so 50 GB of data will be available, uh, 50 GB of data will be available in data node 1, and the replication factor, the same data will be available in data node 3 or 4, something will be available. Roughly for the understanding, I just take as a 40 GB, it's like a 200 GB entered the floor. Into 8 think. core, oh, you're saying. Okay. That is okay. Don't I didn't consider the core right now. So okay. 40 GB, so block size is 128 MP, right? MB, okay, yes. So one GP of data equal to eight blocks. Okay. Because four will be in five twelve and four five twelve five twelve thousand twenty four MB. So eight block will be considered. Correct? Okay. So forty GP of data, then how much it will come? Three twenty one lights coming. Okay. Eight. Into eight. Okay. That is the value for three twenty block will be raised to that. Okay. Okay. Any other question? Uh, that's that's it uh, i guess dinesh okay any other topic is not covered it with you one minute dinesh or on doubt actually yeah so f four uh, data node is there okay which we have 16 gb and 8 core that means 1220 blocks only i'm getting of oh, why we have yeah okay why we have added that included that name node because we are not going to store the data in, in the name node, right? Yeah, correct. Okay, so if I calculate, so we, I'm getting only 1,280 blocks only. Yeah, correct. I just calculate total 80 GB, right? It's not like that. So total- but we, we required uh, 1,600 blocks, right? So, so, yeah, total 1,600 blocks are available. I just made only one calculation for data node one. Okay. Likewise, it will be happen for data node two, three, four. It's a similarity. So how the data will be allocated and finding that operation with all of this thing. Same flow. But one, I just take it for examples. That's it. Okay. Okay. So likewise, 20 GB of data will be happen here. Likewise, the block will be split and do the analysis. Data node three also same like this. Data node four also same like this. Okay. Hey, just one more doubt, Dennis. Yeah. 
uh, is there any limitation like these many blocks only need to be allocated for this many cores of RAM? Any limitation is there? That uh, depends on your data node sizes. If it is a 16 GB of RAM, maximum 16 GB of, of data only, right? That is the only limitation. So maximum 128 block will be acquired with your 16 GB of RAM. Let's say if suppose you have 100 GB of RAM in data node, then it will be taken out 100 GB of the block data will be in this data node, if data is available. If it is not available, it will not be taken out. 100 GB of data, sorry, 100 GB of RAM is available in data node 1. Your data size is only 40 GB for processing. Then it will be acquired 40 GB of RAM and rest of 60 GB ROM, RAM will not be touched up. It will be processed by another one job. Okay, if suppose the value will be exceeded, then RAM will be followed with this partitioning characteristics. So with capable of sizes is going to be processed and fetching the output separately and process again the remaining data based on the partition. Clear? Yeah, I got about the memory part. See, while submitting the I job or anything or a Spark job, we'll give the number of cores and number of RAMs, right? That is a Spark job at the time we have to provide it. That's a Spark architecture is something different. I'm saying how the job will be submitted, Jan will be doing that operation. Okay. okay. Spark architecture is different, that runtime architecture. Okay, the process of the way is same, but the architecture is little modified. Okay. If suppose in Spark you will be allocated 200 GP, now let's say for example you just consider it from 200 GP, you are going to process with 20 GP of data. Your total size of uh, cluster is available 80 GP of RAM. 20 GP of data will be splitted and each node will be taken to 25 GP of RAM. Okay, so at the time it will be follow the 20 GP at the same time to process it and providing the output to you without any re that. Uh, Partition slicing will happen. It entire the partition data will be go to the memory and processed and finding the output. This is the output for you like that. It's just sending to you. Okay. At the time you can mention in your total GP of data is 20 GP only. So my small cluster I want uh, 20 GP of RAM as well as each node two cores enough to process it. If you need to process more faster, then you can mention it as a four core or something. You can mention in the number of core as well as that memory size, everything you can mention. The yarn can understand, okay, this kind of operation, we need to allocate this kind of, uh, this much of RAM and core like that. That's manually you are going to override yarn architecture, yarn workflow. And once that job will be submitted to the yarn, it just consider and if the proper resources are available, then only it's going to be start the job as per your expected values, like the number of uh, cores and RAM. If it is not available, then it will not move to the submitted stage. It just accepted stage itself, it just wait until the resource will be getting back. Because multiple jobs will be running at the same time, right? So uh, eight, uh, yeah, out of 80 GP, already 60 GP of RAM will be used. Only 20 GP of space RAM is available. But you are going to submit another one job with 30 GP of data. And you clearly mentioned, I want 30 GP of RAM is needed for my process. At the time, Spark, sorry, Yarn will not be allowing you to process to this environment. It just wait when it will be getting 30 GP of minimum data. RAM space available, that time only Spark job will be keep starting. Until that, it will not be allowed. Okay, that will happen in the back. Are you clear, guys? Yes. Any so, question? job will not fail, right? In that case, even though if we no. give the I value, that's a certain scenario is available. You will not be wrongly predicted your input size and that course will be overcome from the data node. Then the job is going to be failure. So a lot of scenario will be raised. 
if everything is correct then you start a problem some caches memory will be overcome then the the time also job will take so failure is different okay this is the allocation part we will be discussing now okay any other question no others or any other point that you will be expected to come back again i want to clear on this point like that anything sir okay you will get some clarity in this i think name node data node resource manager node manager task tracker job tracker uh, application master container that all we have discussed i think so block size input split and fault tolerance replication factor um mm, uh, suzuki performance so that all we already we have discussed i think right so nothing we have missed in that part did i missed anything No, zookeeper and all we, did, we didn't cover. Zookeeper is nothing but just taking this operation. If name node is failure or data node failure, we have to identify right. That will be covered with your zook. Okay, so here zookeeper is available. That's a heartbeat, right? Heartbeat on block report. so all the proper information can be gathered to the name node is failure so keep it only identify and will start the operation why are that block reports and uh, heartbeats data node for block report and name node for heartbeat what is the interval time between that heartbeat anyone block size interval time and hard bit interval time can anyone remember it i think everything i forgot i guess Oh, gee, that, that those things are not covered for us. Heartbeat block report is not covered. No. It's not first. Okay, nothing but that. Heartbeat. it's each 3 seconds it just confirm i still i am active like that this information will be sent to zookeeper by from name node because if name node is failed entirely will be going to fail right so name node can understand and will be start the operation uh via this heartbeat only that secondary name node everything if suppose name node failed immediately secondary name node will need to kick start that will be followed with this respective of heartbeat if this this is a kind of pulse only if it is not received to the zookeeper then zookeeper can consider okay name node is failure we can boot up secondary name node immediately like that so secondary name node will be take the in charge with all your uh, continuous process operation 
and read all the metadata from name node to secondary name node and will be performed. This heartbeat operation in name node to data name like the name node to data node is called block report. So block report for every 10 seconds once. This is a backend of feature. Every 10 seconds once each node will be sending the information to Zookeeper still I'm active or not like that. Okay, that's it. Better I just asking you what all is covered or not covered, then we can go with it. Name node, data node. Just tell me if anything, so what all the point is not covered, then we can discuss that with name node, data node. Secondary name node. Resource manager. Load manager, job tracker, and task tracker. Name node, data node, secondary name node, resource manager, node manager, job tracker, task tracker, application master. Container Heartbeat Block Report Zookeeper Heartbeat Block Report Zookeeper Mm -hmm. High availability. Replication factor. Blocks size. Input split mm. name of the system node manager split okay. seventies will come with yarn eighties will come with export split FS images. Mm. I think everything I mentioned, everything I, I missed. So in this, anything is not covered, you just let me know, we will discuss that. Thing. Which one is not covered still? Till that node manager only covers you after that. It... Okay, this one is not this one is not covered. Yes, node not covered. All of you, all of you is the same or different? My batch Abdul is there, and that's it. Yeah, first image means file system image. So that yes. will take uh, every day or whenever you want it, we can take it. The file system image is not for us, it's for uh, name node references. I will tell you, if it is not covered, then we can cover everything. Until this, only node manager till is covered, right? Yes. Okay, so demons we can discuss then. So Yarn, you are clear, right? No questions, I guess.
Yeah, and just now we have discussed. So block size, we know very well, default block size 128 MB. Okay, resource manager, node manager, okay. Up to some other heartbeat. That's just before we are discussed. Every three seconds, once it will be sent the information. This is also we have discussed. Block report. Same like 10 seconds once. It will be sent the information. Zookeeper will be follow. High availability we have to discuss and replication factor we know. 3x. Am I right? So 3x replication by default will be working. So these are all now we have covered. So rest of that we need to cover. Am I right guys? So this many we have to cover it. Correct? Okay, I just take the same example. Mm -hmm. But we can go with that demon concept. So it will be a name node and we just take three data nodes. Okay, so this is the flow, this is the follow question, I am going to use it. Now we just discuss about this job tracker and task tracker is nothing but node manager and resource manager. It will be available in Hadoop, 1x version and controlled by name node. But now it is modified and it will be controlled by resource manager and node manager via YARN. Okay. So same only YARN resource manager. Okay, here YARN will come. This YARN controlling with your resource manager. Okay, same by node manager is available in each data node itself. In node manager, we have two. One is called container, another one is application master. Okay, so this is the flow. So resource manager, control, node manager. Okay, so resource manager is nothing but it just identify about your job details. What are the job will be submitted, everything will be converted as a jobs. So each job will be followed by your resource manager whether it is success or not like that. Node manager, each job have multiple tasks. So node manager can understand about 
task information. Let's say, for example, I am submitting the query via client. As we have space for that. I am the client, okay? So I am raising the request to the one. So likewise, I will be uh, assigning another one job. No rotations. Okay, let's say for example, we can take like this. So client one as requesting to fetch the data with uh, 20 GB of data. Client two will be requesting to Hadoop environment with 30 GB of data. Okay, so two requests I will be received to name known name node have one metadata information about all your data. Okay, so now resource file will be created. This client one request as job one, client two request as a job. Okay, so it just consider as a job one and job two. This information will be available in your resource manager. Just resource manager about know about your job details. So this two whether the job one is complete or job two, that information resource manager is available. In this job one, have multiple tasks. So in this 20 GB of data, I'm handling two tables, two five tables. One is an uh, employee table, another one is account table. So two tables, the total size is 20 GB of data. I'm going to process it and via I'm doing the joints, right? So it will be multiple tasks. I need to fetch that data from uh, employee table is a task one. I need to fetch the data from um, accounts table. That's a task two. And then I just going to join both. That is a three, a third task. So one job have three tasks, right? Are you clear on this point? Want to retrieve two tables of data, task one for employee, task two for accounts and task three for three joints. Okay, this is the one job one task details. Likewise, job two have uh, five tasks. Okay, so this task information will be gathered and followed via your load manager. Okay, whether the data will be available data one or two or three, whatever. Each data node, if the task, first two tasks will be working with data node one and third task will be working with data node three. So such kind of anything. So that task is completed or not, that information will be traced by node manager. All the task is completed, then only job is going to be completed. So resource manager, just keep on tracking your node manager that given task is completed or not, like that information. Node manager will be going to work internally and complete the task with respect to your container and application master. Okay, till now you are clear or any questions? Then I will tell you about container and application master. Any question this?
okay i got an interview question they were asking like you submitted the job job is running and one of the data nodes goes down what will happen one of the data node is going to be down then that a particular task will not be functioning so replication factor based the same data will be available in another data node right there the particular task is going to be start again that will be happen the backend if particular data node is going to, one is going to be failure i cannot retrieve the data but replication factor that same data available in data node 2 and 3 right any one is going to be locate and perform the particular data with particular task and fetching the output to that is the use of replication factor we will not be lose any fault on the back are you clear any question any other question yarn will be in separate server yeah separately they will be load with uh, nodes that will not be doing any operation just as a monitor server okay because if the data size is huge then yarn also will be uh, getting impact so that they will be using separate nodes Okay. There's any other question? Okay. Till now we are clear, right? Loan manager, resource manager, name node, and that are all. Okay. If I get one more thing. Uh, how to park it? Extra second day load available here. Yeah, one more. Okay. So now we will discuss about container. So container is nothing but this is your memory. Memory lock is called the container. it will be follow with your ram size for each job it will be locate So, if particular job you need a ten GB of RAM, right? Then out of sixteen GB of core, sorry RAM, I have let's say for example sixteen GB of RAM and eight core I mentioned. So, if you are going to work with this environment, for job one is needed twenty GB of data, job two is twenty thirty GB of data. So, sixteen core here each ten core, sorry, each twenty GB of four, five, okay. Mm, okay, let's print it. Eight, eight, and then four. Like this is available. So job one is needed eight GB of RAM from data node one, and it just restrict and create one virtual memory environment that will be available with eight GB of RAM space. That places only your data will come and process and send back to the node four out of your sixteen GB. So once eight GB of RAM is released. Then eight GB of RAM is available. That will be used for job two. Okay, so it's like a restricted virtual environment of in your data nodes until the job is completed. Once job is completed, that then uh, node will release that RAM spaces and will another one job going to be performed at it. Okay, that is the use of RAM. Application master is nothing but your core. So how much thread is needed? How much core you are going to use? 
so out of 8 core for job one you are using 2 cores then 6 core will be in idle and it will be used for another job that is the use of application master it's like a mini cpu internally it's going to work with I mean, your assigned ram spaces yeah any question sorry i didn't get it why is breaking hello did anybody ask me the question guys are you clear till now no question okay okay so we will connect back after 5 minutes okay is it fine everyone just 5 minutes break okay okay then okay. so let's stay and wait for we will be connect back
Hello guys, I'm Adibal. Hi, yes, Dinesh. Okay, so any questions? Tell now any questions, any doubts? You're clear, right? Till now. So now you know about task tracker and job tracker, node manager, resource manager, as per application master and container. So name node for, sorry, hard bit for name node. Block report for data now. So keep a just monitor tool to start your second window. Okay, clear. Yarn also we have discussed. So I availability. So high availability is nothing but this operation will be controlled by a zookeeper, right? So zookeeper, if name node is failure, immediately it just identify and respond back to secondary name node, correct? It just intimate to secondary name node with high availability. What is high availability? Mostly in database team, they know about it, high availability. Anyone can explain? Okay, so if it is failure, without delays, it's going to be started. So for example, if I've submitted two jobs, job one is almost going to complete, but certain cases, name node is going to be failure, right? So suppose I just identify and start it again, then job one will be start from beginning. So it takes uh, two hours of time. And one hour 55th minutes, job sorry, name is going to be failure. It's almost job one is going to be completed state. At the time, if it is failure, then the entire the job we have to submit again. And two hours will take again. So that's the reason Zookeeper can identify name node has already failed. Then within an immediate factor, secondary name node will be boot up. This boot up can refer all the metadata from name node and will be started immediately. That is called high availability within a failure of timing, fractions of time only to be taken. Then how it will be read this information, metadata information immediately? That is called FS images. Okay, 
so name no information once it is failure metadata will be take like a snapshot so that snapshot will be sent to secondary name node and secondary name node will give the first priority what are all the continuous jobs running that information will be located and informed let's say for example this is also like a snapshot i have a lot of the detail if i'm going to find it it's a picture data you will not be getting it right the text but in picture i can immediately identify okay where the data node one is available data node two is available it's like a seeking not a scanning normal file whatever in that pdf reader always you just go and check any rec any content it will be start from this you know, beginning and will go to the end that is scanning operation but in this picture immediately i can know where the name node is available where the data node is available like that it's like a seeking index so client one job sorry the job one information i can immediately seek via this fs images and continue the process into secondary name node we immediately all the respective information once it is gathered it will be completed so one two hours job one hour 55 minutes is going to be failure then high availability will help to restart your secondary name node and will continue from 1 hour 55 minutes will take just 30 seconds or 1 minute and it will be complete 2 hour 1 minute timings okay it's very reduced time right that timeline will be follow with your high availability are you clear guys any question Do you have any question? This. Hope no. And replication factor we have discussed. Block size default is one twenty eight MB. Will it be possible to set the block size to another value? Default is. 128, but I want to inject the data with 1 GB black size. So how we can do that? Anyone? Same like replication factor instead of 3x, I want to update with 5x. How do we do that? Uh. We have this uh, in configuration file HDFS I have on site. Yeah, that uh, is what can... configuration is available. Yeah, so we can change there, or we can use the commands uh, HDFS, DFS, uh, etc. I want to put the data with the file replications on file, file. A B C dot E X T file. I am going to put into Hadoop environment with the file X replication. How we can do that? Uh, so it's uh, we can use the command. Uh, HDFS, DFS, uh, setrep, uh, I, uh, like, uh, dash w, uh, space five, uh, followed by the file path. Okay, so I can set replication will help you to do that, right? But it's already loaded existing file. You can use that replication. I want to inject the new file. This is a kind of interview question. What I am asking. Okay. If already existing the file in HDFS, then set replication help to modify the value from three to five whatever. But while I'm putting the file itself, I want to mention a file replication. How do we do that? The simple answer. Uh, um, shall we use the command uh, uh, dash d uh, uh, space dfs dot replication equal to five? Yeah, that is also possible. Another one in configuration management, if you have modified, then the file will be stored with files because everything the query will be executed. It's just going to check with your configuration. So there also you can modify and will be stored. 
okay so two ways we can achieve it one is configuration file the replication factor into five you can modify and let's start over hard cluster then we can do that analysis or using the hyphen d dfs dot replication equal to three then you will be inject the data then it will be inject with 5x replication of water like this you can do it okay uh, but, uh, but how to change the block size same like the block size you have to declare hyphen d block size dfs of block size but that block size will be in mb format so okay. so i we have to convert it to bytes yeah exactly we have to convert entirely into the bytes then will it be supported okay. so 128 mb will be in kilobytes will be in 2024 from kilobytes to normal bytes into 2024 128 of 1024 of 1024 that will come clear One twenty-eight, thousand twenty-four, thousand twenty-four. There's a byte size you can so you mentioned it. That's an important. Okay. Any question? Now you know about the first image. The first image is like a. Snapshot image that will refer for secondary name node, and it will be provided from Hadoop name node. Name node to secondary name node. Okay. Yarn we have discussed already. Yet another resource negotiator. Input split. What is input split? Anyone? Splitting of blockages, blockage block sizes. Yeah, both will be block size, but this will follow with your logical block size. But this is physical, not a block size. We can mention it as storage. Okay, physical block, not block size. Actual data 128 MB will be considered as a block size, but while reading via MapReduce, right? That mapper will be created based on this input split one rule. So number of input split equal to number of input split equal to number of mapper. So let's say, for example, I have a data. I already I said right, one GB of data. Okay, so that will be available data node one, data node two, and data node three. Let's say for example, so here this data will be uh, four blocks of data is available. Here two blocks of data is available. Here two blocks of data is available. So this is the eight block of one GB of data will be stored. Let's say for example, in this block, this data will be in sequence. Okay, so four block will be in sequence. Block one, block two, block three, and block two. Then everything will be considered and created as a single mapper. If it is everything will be in sequence, then it will be performed with only one input split. Because it will be identified. What is the start and what is the end of this block? So that the entire will be because it's a single map input. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
okay so one input split means it will be one map so in this data node one this four blocks of data will be working with only one mapper only but if suppose my data and data node two i have two blocks of data but it will be in different so this four block will be considered we can consider as a single one file abc.txt file is available so this is the one block of data is available this is abc.txt actual data size is 1 gb so it will be 128 so 512 mb of data will be stored here so the same abc.txt two block which means 256 mb of data will be stored in data node 2 that will be stored as So block four, sorry five, and block six will be stored. Uh, okay, that record will be stored. Block six there, and block seven here. Block seven is different one. Okay. So this file will be abc. txt. This file also abc. txt. And this file will be xyz. txt. Then here it will be created two input split. Here one input split. Here one input split. Then. For this two blocks of data, it will be working with two mappers. Okay, guys, are you clear? This is called input split. Based on number of input split is going to be work with your number of map. Any question? If data will be shuffled, then number of map will be increased more. If data is not shuffled, then number of map will be reduced. This is a simple understanding I'm saying. So here the number of split is one. Am I right? Okay. So here one split, here one split. So data node two, two mapper will be running. Data node one, only one mapper will be running for the entire four blocks of data. That is I'm saying. This is total will be five twelve MB of data out of one GB. But here one twenty eight MB separately will be working for one map one input split. As one mapper, as well as another one twenty one twenty eight MB of data will be working with another one mapper. So in this data node two, only for two block, right? Out of just twenty six, two fifty six MB of data. This two fifty six MB of data will be working two mapper. But entire five twelve MB of data will be working only with one mapper. You are getting my point? So this is efficiently reduced. And performance will be increased. We will be losing your resource here. This two block will be running only one. This is enough. But if the data will be shuffled, then you will be running with two maps here. Is the the data of... is not in continuous. Yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, in uh, real time, it will be in the same situation. Yeah, possible. That's the reason they are suggesting to load with high volume of data, not a small file. If it is loaded, your small file with uh, 100 GB, uh, 10 GB or 2 GB like that, then the data will be properly will be stored in that particular data node. If it is you are going to store into the small small files, let's say for example 128 MB of data, I say, 
I just chunk it again. I will come with one thirty. Then one block will be occupied. Second block half of will be occupied, and third data will be coming again. You will be missing your spaces internally. So number of map will be created more. But if you are loading the data in huge size, then entire the data will be occupied, right? The particular blocks in sequence manner. So you can handle the data very efficiently also. Clear? Because whenever you will be loading the data, it just a distributed method. It will be stored in your data rooms. That's an important. Okay. Same likewise replication also. In this 512 MB of data, maybe here it is sequence. If data node one is going to be failure, I cannot handle with data node one. So this data will be replicated somewhere in shuffled manner. Then take multiple mapper to perform the same job. That is a chance. Okay. Are you clear? Yes, do you have any question this? Can you go to the previous diagram? This so, yeah, no, no, not this one. The split one, yeah. Here you mentioned like if the entire data node is not available, it may available in data node three. So there will be only one mapper in that case. Only one particular block is not available. In that case, what will happen? No, no, no. Actually, 512 MB, I just declared for this one. ABC.txt is in 1 GB file. ABC.txt, uh, which will be 1 GB of data. For example, I just take data 1 and 2 only. The data will be ABC.txt. Another one data will be data 2 will be stored somewhere. Okay, let's say for example, it will be take like this. If it is properly in sequence, Hmm. Six, seven, okay, then it will be eight and it will be nine. It is sequence, rest of this two blocks of data. Then it will be considered and running only one method here. What are the other problems you faced or what are the problems we may faced? Sorry? What are the other problems we, we may face? This is also one kind of problem that you may be chances to face. It. That's a real time, it will be in different manner. While the resource will not be available, that's a speculative execution concept is available. So uh, that's uh, real time, it's a different. This is the back end, how that Hadoop will be working. This is also one problem scenario I'm saying. Okay. With respect to your core the resource is not available also, then we have to handle in different manner. This is the size data will be in shuffle, then we'll be handling like this. Just to comparing you. Okay. We can do disk fragmentation or something like that. That is possible. Uh, disk fragmentation we cannot do here, but we can identify block information. That's the block stats information. Everything is properly aligned or not like this. Okay, if it is not aligned, we found okay this particular file it is not proper. Then we have one more option. We can remove the data, reuse the data. That may get it into a proper shape. Yeah. Okay. And also you can mentioning with one GB into. The block size, what we have discussed, right? This one GP of data entirely you can store with only one block size. Then one oh. GP will be in one block size. Like that, you can insert into Hadoop and Roman. Then that will be only one map will be working for this entire data. Okay. Like this one also, you can do it. Okay? Good. Mainly the height level architecture, they will be followed with GB sizes of block size. Google and Amazon like 
they are using internally with gp sizes of block sizes but very we are using very less for our desktop then that solution will be go with 128 mb default 128 so we can mention 128 and store it in only one data node that can be possible yeah that is the reason while putting it so you can mention that block size is 1 gb then it will be stored in only one data node properly in sequence okay, okay. any other question are you clear guys hadoop teamants so what is name node data node secondary name node resource manager node manager uh, job tracker task tracker application master container heartbeat block report zoo keeper high availability replication factors block size input spread yarn fs images in this any questions or any doubts still so if the yarn is down what will happen yarn will down then we cannot do anything properly right it just hold that is no job will submit in your hadoop environment once it is yarn will be restarted then only we can do that okay, okay? so we need to monitor yarn and we also need to monitor the node manager no no, no. yarn will be monitored by zookeeper as plus well name will be monitored if yarn failure no issues we immediately we can overcome that If data node data node is going to be failed, then only we will be getting back. So name node. Okay. Yeah, just resource resource monitor only. So we can immediately identify it and we can do. But in meanwhile, we cannot do that any job performances. That will only happen. What will happen the existing job? That also going to be failure. That will be a failure. Okay. Yeah, we cannot monitor, right? Okay. Okay. Guys, any question? Are you clear, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, any doubts now? We are please ask. I think no. Okay. Hope you know about that hard of our creature right now. There is no doubts in that, I guess. if you have time can you just explain me the name node uh, uh, what the data will be stored in the name node name node just metadata information yeah in metadata what are the information will be stored about your size where the data is available directory as well as block size information replication information and what kind of data that you have stored and uh, Okay, and uh, internally block report information. Yeah, that will be pro provide you that replication factor details. And if it is corrupted data, then also it can be understood by YAML itself. That is also possible. So the data. corrupted, corrupted file, corrupted. Corrupted data. data. Okay. You may you wrongly insert the data as a corrupted record, then that you can also identify. So that is possible. So this many information you can get from name node. As well, while you are using the Hive and other ecosystem, then data will be split and stored into that environment, right? Partitioning, bucketing, other multiple files will be created, but everything will be followed in sequence. That can, all the metadata information will be stored. What kind of file format and how much data will be stored? 
and in case data nodes one is failure immediately how where which is the short way to get that data node sorry which, which is the short way to get the data from the another data, get data node that are all the information you get from name node that is a metadata reference just data about the data okay okay yeah thank you so name node just as a overview so name node will have the basic information like the address of the data and which node it is and what type of the data and where the replication is being stored yeah exactly. is it right that, that information okay and the data node will have only the data uh, yeah it just know about the data whether the data properly there or not that only data node available okay so in the data node we have the node manager and the container manager and the app manager yeah app node manager master. container and application master okay okay so yan will have job information and the task information the source manager will have the job information node manager each data node have some task track right? then it's yeah. like a node manager it's like a project manager to team lead resource manager like a project manager node manager is like a team lead Team lead only okay. doing that all the tasks and task monitoring really. properly, just getting whether the particular project is completed or not like that. That information only will be get from resource manager. Properly, all our development is completed, then project manager will be informed to the client. We have done like that. That top level management. It's the same for so master and slave. Internally, they will be using for job identification also. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any other question? So here the zookeeper will be enabled only if the name node is down. So zookeeper come into the life, and he will just point it out to the secondary name node. Am I right? Yeah, correct. Okay. Guys, any topic is not clear. Let me know. We will discuss it in, if needed. Okay, I think no questions and no doubts. You just do practice from your end, and let me know if any doubts. Then it's the last question. Yeah. So it's like the once a job been submitted, so it goes to the name node, and name node will have all the information. Is it will be like that, or it goes to the yarn? Yarn will segregate the okay. These are the name nodes you need to go and fetch the data. Then corresponding data nodes will will go. Can you just tell me the flow along? Yeah, correct. Only job just a client will be request. This is the data I'm going to process it. This data available in a particular directory. Yes. Okay, that information only will be provided. So what will be happen? Name node, sorry, name node have the metadata information just collected, and then this metadata information will be sent to your Yarn environment. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay Yarn have about your metadata information. As per well, your resource information in yes. the node manager, so how much the resource is needed for the particular job, that it will be resource can be identified with respect to data node. Which what are the data node that data same data is available? So based on the partitioning, it just going to work with the particular data node via node manager and resource manager. So node manager complete that particular partition the data as a task. In each data node, and final output will be sent back to resource manager. Resource manager will be confirmed. Yeah, all the task is completed. So I just consider the job is completed. You can take the output like that to name uh, name node. Name node can resend back that information to client. Okay, got it. Okay. The first the point of contact is name node. Okay. Yeah. Always, whatever the query will be passed, first it will be reached to name node to gather the metadata. Okay. Thank you. Okay, guys. If uh, any other question, we can continue or we can wind up. 
give us some homework so we will also work on it richard yes uh, that would be good richard i am not getting give some homework uh, you can ask us uh, to try what will happen this particular situation ah uh, yes ah uh, yes dinesh you can do some assignment something like that so that they can work it out that's i'm saying week. how you will be loading the data that is i am asking at the run time itself so i just asking the interview question everything to you right and uh, so probably mostly they will be asked about how the flow is happening internally and what if suppose that particular uh, demon is failure that all they will be asked and uh, that all the demons we can identify right so what is the command to identify all the demons are enabled okay. jps yeah so using the jps command we can know what are the demons are running like that we can identify so it must be name node data node secondary name node name node node manager resource manager this is the major five demons should be run rest of the is supported one if any this one is not running then something's happen with your hard cluster that we have to identify and compatibility issues will be raised sometime that is also we have to monitor if you will be using multi node cluster so if that multi node cluster your java version will be vary or your data sizes that you mentioned the configuration file is completely wrong then it will not be connected it like a decommissioned data that is we have to focus it that that is important mm, and uh, demo is an active then how much the data will be stored in that entire the cluster that we can identify do you know the command total size of the data will be stored in hadoop and roman how do you know that anyone no oh. efs admin report will be help to identify how much the total size are occupied in your hadoop cluster that we can identify okay and uh, so mostly they will be asked the architecture and will they ask about the commands that's already i told you how do you handle the space related files while well, suppose you are going to load the data with the space the file name will be contains of space how will be retrieve the data did anyone try hello okay just take this as an assignment you have a file as well as directory both contain space how we can achieve it to retrieve or put get and cat all this thing you just check out and let me know okay so abc.txt instead of that abc space of xy is that dot txt that is the file name likewise directory also contains in middle with the space so such kind of file how we can handle it in a hadoop and roman okay you just google or whatever you can do it then come back to me. That's your assignment. Hey Dinesh, I don't have anything. Uh, uh, it's like anywhere we can practice in online, where we will get uh, environment for free or few things. That's your student. Already we provide you that VM, right? There you can do the practice. Hadoop environment. We will be provide that particular private VM for everyone. There you can do all the practice. Okay, I'll get it from calling the case. I don't have it. Okay. Okay. Any other question? I think no. Okay, we can wind up with that. Okay, Dinesh. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Fine. So this uh, recordings, no, I would upload it uh, in our site, bigdatahandson.com/videos.
you can see to that after a few hours no i'll be uploading it and uh, 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 adnesh uh, the complete topic today uh, happened is yawn right yeah yawn and uh, hard of uh, and hard of face so, okay okay adnesh okay thank you okay all. thank you thank you all thank you